Hi, friends. We're taking a look at the newly released Natasha Denona Dream Collection. If it's your first time here, hi, I'm Alicia, an online coach who also teaches virtual classes. And if you want to see more content like this, I know you haven't even started the video yet. How dare I even ask you to do this? Maybe like it after you see it. If you do like it, consider subscribing if you want to see more of my face. Hmm. And maybe click the notification bell so you know when these new videos pop up. <laughs> the hair, I took off my headband, but I don't know if that was a good idea. It's very fluffy up there. Eh, I'm just gonna keep it like that. The PR package is on its way, but I just decided to get it anyway as I had wanted it to arrive in a timely fashion. But when it did, I just didn't have time to film it. I was eating, it was like around four o'clock, the lighting wasn't great, and I was headed over to Bay, so hmm. I could have stayed home and filmed with it, but I actually just wanted to spend time with this palette, get acquainted with it, and then come on here. Not to say that first impressions aren't fun or they can't serve a purpose, but with the dream collection, I was intrigued, I wanted to dive in, then just kind of tear into it, first impression style and familiarize myself with the palette, kind of gather a few comparisons in my head. I also have a few demos I did yesterday just to bring you more looks without necessarily having this video like an hour long. So I hope that's helpful. I also have swatches to show you, but let's get into the details, shall we? We have the Natasha Denona Dream Palette collection. This is currently available on NatashaDenona.com, Sephora, and I believe Beautylish, if not by now, very soon. You can buy the full set on Natasha's site for $176 instead of the $195, so there is a discount there. The actual Dream Palette, which I have here, retails for $69. I think this is a little more expensive. I believed her mini size palettes were 65 so it's a, it a little more four dollars more the my dream cheek duo that retails for 48 dollars my dream lipstick for 27 my dream lip gloss for 27 and lastly i need nude lip crayon <gasps> for 24. You can see the components are in the specialized packaging that Natasha Denona herself designed. This is her penmanship here, my dream palette. And I made sure to listen to the video where she speaks about how she came to this collection that she photographed, modeled, and was a dancer, had to do her own makeup, and also did the makeup of her dancer friends. And 18, as a model, typically in the 90s, models will do their own makeup for the catwalk so that played a huge influence in her artistry and when she became a full-fledged professional makeup artist that definitely had an impact on what type of makeup she wanted to create and Natasha was all about creating pro level high performing user friendly products for the consumer but after all the eyeshadow palettes Natasha had released she wanted to do something very personal favorite colors with new formulations the ultimate color selection like her ultimate fave colors for everyone every day and everything Thing. For the eyeshadow palette, we are looking at two existing shades that are already in the collection and 13 new shades, so that is 15 in all. We have a high impact foiled multi-chrome and duochrome toppers in this palette. Six mattes, two duochrome sparklers, two cream to powders, one duochrome, three metallic shades, and one multi-chrome. Again, the packaging is hand designed by Natasha as well as her own handwriting. and. This was, again, specially curated to represent everything that has happened in her life from an artistry point of view, whether it was photography, modeling, dancing, makeup application. And when I saw this palette, I felt immediately like this definitely felt like a greatest hits palette. So you got a little bit of everything, although I would feel it I wouldn't say it's monochromatic like retro, but after using this palette over the weekend, I can 
confidently say for me this is a mixture between retro and lila so with that said let's get into the swatches we have first blackest black which is a cream matte shade already existing in the collection and this is an intense matte black next we have penny which is a matte dark penny brown serenity a satin medium cool brown carpe diem a matte medium dusty pink babies a metallic light medium rosy nude instinct a cream to powder matte medium fuchsia thrill a duochrome sparkler sparkly metallic duochrome golden nude with pink shift unity is a matte medium light pink nude risk is a metallic medium maroon invention a sparkling metallic duochrome tangerine with bronze and golden sparkles put a little more on there just so you can see that base and gold flip and vision are multi-chrome metallic shifts of green pink nude and gold edgy cream to powder matte medium dark eggplant spontaneous is our metallic light pink nude Nurture, our creamy matte, medium, cool nude. Familia is our creamy matte, medium, caramel brown. So here are all the swatches for the Dream palette. And why don't we quickly go into some brief comparisons. Immediately when I saw Nurture, I thought about Nude Mauve, not only from Retro, but also from Lila. So I'll quickly swatch these for you again. This is Nurture from the Dream Palette, and here we have Nude Mauve from Lila and Retro. And you can see that Nurture is a little more, well, specifically, it's described to be a medium cool nude, but you can see not as mauve as Nude Mauve. We also have the crease shade from Glam. I'll quickly show that. I think this is going to lean a lot more cooler than Nurture. Instinct is a cream to powder, but the color reminded me of Magnetic and Viola from Lila. So here we have again Instinct from Dream, and then next we have Viola from Lila, and now Magnetic which is a little more magenta, but you can see Instinct has a little more red, whereas this is more like you see violet and fuchsia. And then Edgy, the second cream to powder from the palette, has that eggplant look, but I thought of, ooh, you know what, hold on, let me get it. I thought of Deep Dive from the bronze palette, which is one of my most favorite shades, and I love how it's in there with the other warmer tones. This, to me, was more eggplant, but... You know, I guess I'm thinking about the eggplant skin, whereas this for me is a little more plum leaning. So, you know, I guess we all have a different idea of what eggplant should look like. And Rebellion from Retro, definitely more like maroon or more red than the ones found in Dream. Serenity, funny enough, reminds me of Iconic from Pat McGrath's Sublime. And then Jude from Retro actually is a lot more shiny, whereas Serenity has more of a burnished finish to it. It's like a satin, but look how shiny Jude is. So a lot cooler toned and, and silvery in nature compared to Serenity. As far as the duochrome sparklers, we have Thrill and Invention. I'll quickly show these again. Thrill has the more pink shift. Invention has that gold shift, whereas the sparklers found in Retro are much more pink. So Glitz, for sure, leans more pink. You can see it here. Whereas Psychedelic has like blue and pink in the pearl right so they're a lot more cool tone than was found in the dream duochrome sparklers familia is the caramel matte brown from dream but we also have nude vino from retro and i think this is going to lean as the the name suggests more wine compared to Familia. Familia, you can see, just has a lot more brown in there and it's warmer in undertone. As well as Amara, I'll quickly swatch Amara. I know it's on the elbow and not ideal, but that's definitely a little more wine than Familia. And I'll quickly swatch Groove from Retro. Let's see here. Compared to... Hmm, hmm, hmm. I would say 
either edgy or instinct. Yeah, I'm gonna do it here. That has a lot more burgundy to it. So I don't feel that shade exists in the dream palette. That's a heavy dose of retro. And I think for me, like the basis of retro inspiration in my eyes, I'll say this, I have on the new Hollow Taco collection, the dark hollow linear polishes, and this is dead petals. And when I was doing retro and all the looks, I immediately thought of dead petals, like Victorian vampire-ish type of a feel. I don't have that same vibe from Dream, but I still wanted to show those comparisons anyway. And quickly, I could do Risk. Risk is the metallic here. Let me see, I gotta look at my notes. Hold on. It's the metallic red maroon. And from Leela, Cyclone probably, Cyclone has a little more like copper to it. So I'll quickly show those. This is Cyclone from Leela, Risk from Dream. Pure, 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 pure from Leela as well. A lot more purple. And Vision, Vision is like Blitz Extreme from Mother's Divine Rose 2, like that classic pink to green to gold gig. Yes, this is very smooth, lightweight. It doesn't have the same black base as many indie multi-chromes do, or not all, but a few of them. And I feel because of that, it will have a stronger reflect, but this isn't too bad. Very smooth and shiny on the skin. We'll get into the look shortly, but why don't you come in a little closer for this cheek palette? <gasps> That's enough. We have the trio, and when I saw this color, I thought it would be limited because it's it's your neutral pink for sure. It looks nice on my skin tone, but I don't know how far down the spectrum this will show up as. Let me know down below if you are deeper than me, where you are on the spectrum, if it shows or not. I actually like to use my BK Beauty 107 brush and apply this like I would a powder blush. But as you can see, it's a cream, and I feel it's a lot more soft matte than the blushes that exist in her glam face palettes. So it's soft on the skin. It doesn't have the same delivery as color as let's say like my terracotta tones. I would categorize this shade, you know, the Divine Roses of the world from Pat's Divine Blush collection, a little more cooler in tone. And I think sure fitting for this palette, but generally a color I would not reach for every day. I prefer, again, my richer terracotta tones that deliver that sunburnt look. And while I understand we are exiting the summer season, I tend to favor those colors anyway, despite it becoming fall, because I do feel terracotta shades are fall appropriate anyway. But I understand how this can go with the Dream palette. And yes, this is Natasha's like favorite color, greatest hits release. I guess she likes these types of color blushes. I get it. And she's lighter than me. So perhaps it has uh, more impact on her and people of her skin tone. And yes, these types of neutral pink shades are fitting for those who want that light dose of blush color, not too much, but gives the complexion some life. We have the Glow Cream Base, which is like a, a beige champagne. Yeah, and this goes along with Natasha's philosophy and how she prefers to apply highlighter in favoring a cream base first to be placed on the cheekbones. That will serve as an adherence, it will add a little more emollients to the skin. And then she follows with the powder. We have the Dream Glow, which very smooth actually, but has a whole lot of shine. So I just tap once, place it over the Glow Cream Base, and that's all you need. You can build it up accordingly as much as you like. This is gonna give a lot of shine. Perhaps these shades cover more skin tones than the blush shade for sure, because I do think the Dream Glow shade, not super silvery, leaning more on the champagne light gold side, this might show up as like a lighter highlighter on deeper skin tones, I would just be careful with how much I apply so it won't appear as icy. 
if you were to apply too much. But yeah, I think the Cheek Trio is fine because again, the blush color is not something I would wear all the time. Yes, I could have skipped it in that I have the other uh, cheek products from her line, the four pan products that some I favor over this one, like the bronze palette, right? I know those putty textures weren't favorable to most, but the colors themselves I thought were along my color preference light up more so than this but it's cool you know i'll wear it it's fine and again the cream blush formula has like a moussier soft matte texture that may be more favorable to some i felt like the face glow palette had a little more of like a sponginess to it and not as soft matte you know what i'm saying now for the eyes we'll get into the lipsticks after wrapping the eyes but i just wanted to speak you through two demos that i did yesterday i wanted to show the versatility of the cream to powder shades because since they came in the fuchsia eggplant tones i just wanted to present how you can use these colors and apply them in a washed out fashion depending on the brush that you use and if you use a more tightly packed brush you can apply a lot more more color so what I did with the Sonia G blender pro I applied instinct to one side and edgy on the other you can see between the two that instinct definitely has a little more red in the undertone and edgy I favor edgy over instinct I just love this more eggplant hue that definitely I feel it looks more eggplant on the eyes than it does on the swatch and maybe because you're seeing them here side by side and that contrast makes edgy look more eggplant in nature but I take one of Sonia's builder brushes place a lot more product on the outer lid and you can see how it presents a more intense application and this is the type of brush I would use with these cream to powder formulas because they're moussier in texture they don't have the same pickup as the creamy mattes do but that is on purpose as Natasha had explained when she first introduced this texture to her eyeshadow palettes that she wanted a formula that had an intense color but was easy to apply and was accessible to all makeup wearers and applicators from beginner to pro. So you have a lot more control with how intensely you would like this color to appear on your lids and then I place the colors respectively under the lash line and you can see you can create just a one shadow moment with either instinct or edgy but then I wanted to take advantage of the dual chrome sparklers applied invention which had that tangerine gold flip on top of the instinct side with my finger and then I used a shader brush to just refine the edges but then I applied thrill on top of edgy and thrill has the more pink shift and because these are dual chrome sparklers that can be applied as toppers that takes on the color that whatever color you wish to apply them on top so invention took more of the instinct color as the base and then thrill took on a little bit of the edgy color as his base and I thought these were great approaches if you wanted to keep the eye looks as simple as possible using either edgy or instinct all over your crease lid outer lid and lower lash line and then applied one of the duo chrome shades for more sparkle if you don't want it to appear matte and I can't recall and this is why I should take notes I think I applied babies under one lash line and vision under the other and vision although a multi-chrome and if you don't feel comfortable wearing the shade on the lid you can wear it under your lash line in fact maybe apply instinct first or edgy in a washed out fashion not too intensely so you would use a fluffier pencil brush maybe with a longer bristle and then vision on top of either of those cream to powder formulas and the base from those shades will further amplify the flip in vision and I think will just present a, a stronger look to the multi-chrome and I almost forgot to mention I applied unit I believe on the edges of instinct which just delivered a beautiful peachy gradient it wasn't too much but I think finished off the look beautifully and then applied nurture on the edges of haha <laughs> edgy and that was a great color to pair with the more eggplant cream to powder shade and that I felt it finished the gradient and the edges looked a lot smoother 
with that color to finish the look. And next I wanted to show how far cool and warm you can go within the same palette. So I wanted to show Nurture by itself through the crease with Carpe Diem on the other crease. And you can see Nurture has more of a neutral tone, especially on my skin tone. It takes on like a very light shading in the crease, whereas Carpe Diem is more rosy, but I adore that type of shade I think is great to wear by itself but again just so you can see these two matte side by side and what they're doing and then we went in with black is black on the nurture side to keep it cooler and aspiration on the carpe diem side black is black is tough to work with I would go with with a shader first pack that color on the outer lid and then blend slowly from there because I feel if it doesn't have the same flow as the other mattes in here. So you don't have to necessarily use it as a smoke out shade. You can just use black is black as maybe a shadow wing liner, or you can stamp that shadow along the lash line to make your lashes more voluminous. But keep in mind, just beware, if you wanted to apply black is black on the outer lid, I would go the shader route, maybe like a goat hair brush, such as this Koido brush, really pack it on here, tap, 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 and then fluff the edges on the outer lid for a little more control. Aspiration, a little easier to blend out than black is black. Aspiration actually doesn't have the same amount of depth. It's not gonna be your black brown shade. If you want it, you can mix them together. If you want it, the contrast to be more black in nature. I think Aspiration serves like a nice dose of smoke without it being too much. And as I had mentioned, a little easier to blend out than black is black. On the Nurture black is black side, I apply Serenity on the rest of the lid just to show how you can have a so-called glam moment if you wanted. Despite the warm shades in here, you can have a slightly more cooler toned eye if you had wanted. And then I believe I went in with Spontaneous on the inner corner and maybe babies on the inner lower lash line I can't recall but this I think is a classic eye and if you just pick the shades accordingly if you want it the eye look to be more cool in nature then just stick to those tones and on the other side where I applied aspiration and carpe diem I went risk so we went maroon a lot more warm red in nature and I believe I applied either thrill or invention on the inner corner probably thrill because I thought the pink dual chrome flip would look nice with risk maroon shade and you can see they're distinctly different but they both came from the same palette and that's how Aspiration and Black is Black look like if you wanted to use those shadows as intensifiers like I had done here. And now here we are in the live demo. I think I'll go, let's see, Familia first because this is a great shade on its own. I forgot what I did on Saturday. In terms of the mattes, I think all except black is black and aspiration, the mattes are very smooth and easy to blend. They float across the skin well. They're easy to manipulate. Although I would recommend that you pair Natasha Creamy Mattes with more of a silicone based primer. Right now I have the Linda Halberg primer on. Whereas some people do like to apply their eyeshadow on top of concealer. And that does leave behind more tack and may be advantageous if you wanted to apply like a dual chrome on top of your lid and needed more adherence. But because Natasha's Creamy Matte Formula already has some emollients to it, they're not as dry as, let's say, Pat McGrath Matte or even Viseart ones. I think it'll be better to apply these, again, on top of a slightly drier primer. But if you wanted the adherence and the stick, might have to reapply that primer on the region of your lid where you want, let's say, Invention or Thrill to be on. Let's say you wanted to apply one of the creamy powders with the creamy matte. So again, I'm taking a shader brush, wiggling it side to side, and then I'll tap that shade on the outer part of the lid. I think this is the best approach to get the most color from this type of a texture. And a great way to introduce more of like that eggplant 
into the caramel brown. I think another approach that works fairly well is taking a blender here and just whipping that color lightly on the inner part of the eye and that's going to deliver a little more to the look but if you don't want it completely across your lid then you can just place it there on the inner part of the crease. I haven't done spontaneous on the lid yet. I primarily just used this shade over the weekend and yesterday during the demo as my inner corner highlight, but I can only imagine, especially if you're deeper than me, you could use Invention or Thrill as your inner corner highlight if you feel spontaneous is a little too icy for that task. And why don't we go in with Vision just along the entire lower lash line. Like I said, if you don't feel comfortable with this shade, on the lid, you can place it here on the lower lash line, and I think that'll be more than enough color. Now for me, just giving options, but I much rather wear either Instinct or Edgy all on their own. I wouldn't necessarily apply it on top of a, a matte, a powder matte. I don't think it has the same impact. You could go that way, for sure. I think you're better off either, like for this look, leaving Familia on its own, or just going with Edgy and committing to that shade altogether. If you wanted a more contrast, however, you could always lightly tap Aspiration here on the lid if you wish to have more smoke to the look. And as I had mentioned before, relying on a fluffy shader to lay down the color first and then use the brush to then blend the edges out. And I'll wrap that color down into the Vision shade. So know that if you have to, you can go back in with Familia to blur the edges of that application just so it could look smoother. Bringing Spontaneous on the inner corner, but I wanted to apply Thrill as the dual chrome overlay. So that's gonna give a lot more shine than what Spontaneous has to offer solo as it is just a metallic. But look how lovely that appears. It has a lot more dazzle to it. It's like applying crushed disco ball flakes on your lids. And it doesn't have to be a lot. It could just be very light in that delivery. For the other side, hmm, I have not yet applied Vision yet. Hmm. We could do that. Why don't I quickly show what I was speaking about. So going in with Instinct and just using that to lightly prepare the crease. So you see, it's not gonna be a lot of color off the bat because the cream to powder texture is a lot moussier. It doesn't have the same delivery as Natasha's powder mattes. It's just gonna give you a softer wash of color, but because it is this Deeper shade, it probably will appear deeper if it were a powder matte for sure. But if you wanted to still deal with this type of a color, but needed a medium that was just a little more accessible, then there you go, cream to powder formula. Going in with Vision now, all over the lid, I think paired with Instinct is a great combination. Lightly tapping that in an under the crease. And here I think will be a much better matchup. So going in with Edgy now, tapping that on the outer lid. And I feel that's a much better pairing than what I did with Familia here on this side. And it's all good. Sometimes you gotta take risks, experiment, see what's not, see what's yay. And just, you know, Remember the notes. That delivers a stronger gradient here, so it's a little deeper on the outer lid. But if you still want it more depth, I'm taking my wider, smaller shader and stamping black is black along the lash line. I'm not exactly taking it out to the wing, although you very much well could. We wanted to go there for sure, but that just adds a nice smokiness to the look. Intensity to the lashes where if you wanted to apply falsies, you could. If you wanted to kind of pile on the mascara, the lashes will have a lot more fluff, I feel. I like to also take black here on the outer bracket sometimes and have like that kind of black shadow corner going on. And that definitely adds a little bit of smoke without it being too much. I don't wanna pull that point 
too far out. But yeah, you, you see what's happening? And why not? Let's take risk as our lower lash line moment. So this will appear a lot more red, but I think that's lovely paired with the duochrome on the lid. And this is a Koyuro Tanuki brush, which I love the point and the flexibility. It just makes for a great lower lash line shading. And for the inner corner, hmm, we could do spontaneous. I know that's like the go-to shade for me for inner corner highlight, but I could also go in with uh, Thrill if I wanted a little more sparkly arkly. I think it'll be fun to do a little bit invention Maybe on the inner part. It's gonna golden it up for sure because of the tangerine base, but why not? Since this is already in the palette, let's just go for it. Placing a little bit of unity on the inner part and just whipping that along the edges. Thing that just finishes up a little bit better. Now for the lipstick, I'll just quickly say I do prefer the gloss over the lipstick because the lipstick is very cool toned on me. So I'll just quickly give you a show. So this is the lipstick by itself. And as you can see, it's mauve is cool tone. And with the liner also, it's gonna have that same cool look to it. It's again, not my go-to. I have the other I Need a Nude liner that I think uh, are far better match up for my lip and skin tone. But with the gloss, since it's a little more transparent, not as opaque as the lipstick, when I apply this on top, the glossiness kind of like wears down the look of the mauve shade and it makes it a little more wearable for me. And I actually just wore the lip gloss by itself over the weekend, and I do like how shiny it is. And because it is a gloss, I could get away with the color a bit more. But yes, I understand. I didn't need to get the lipstick. I kind of assume just based on the photograph that it wouldn't be an ideal shade matchup for me, but I do like the packaging. I think, you know, having this a unique design from Natasha and it being a part of the entire collection. Yes, the completionist part of me took over, but it's all good. So now that I've showed you all the things, I'm just going to slap on, should I do mascara or lashes? Hmm. Let's do lashes. And with that said, I'll be back for the final look. And here are the final shots of the look. Hopefully this review was helpful to you, friends. By all means, I wouldn't be in a rush to buy this because if you have several of Natasha's palettes, you could recreate the looks that I did in this video, albeit maybe not with similar finishes because again, the metallics that exist in the Lila palette will have more of that shine when you blend it out versus more of a matte skin-like finish if you decide to use the cream to powders in the dream palette but overall i enjoy the variety in this palette because initially if you see you might think it's monochromatic but i i don't believe it is you can shift a lot from cool to warm to rose to taupe and i think with the varied finishes in this palette also will produce a lot more looks. Again, instinct and edgy on their own without having to combine them with other shades or actually if you wanted, you can combine them with the metallics or the duochrome sparklers, but not necessarily having to combine them with the powder mattes. And I like how there's a rosier matte and a more neutral matte and great that we have the blackest black in a palette, although not the easiest to deal with, it's still there to adjust the smoke, the intensity and the color contrast for your looks if you wanted to add a liner, if you wanted to add more smoke to the outer corner. The duochrome sparklers can be added to amplify any of the metallics in here and add more dazzle. Although we just had one multi-chrome, I do think it a fitting shade, one that we've seen before, this multi-chrome array specifically. Nice that you have the golden shades and more cooler shades to pair with it if you wanted to shift the feel of that color. And overall, I think it fairly easy to use, perhaps maybe one of the more user-friendly palettes out of the portfolio in that, if you don't know, Natasha likes to design her palettes where no matter what column or row, quad, duo, trio you encounter, you have a look. So for instance, this is a look, 
that's the look, that's the look, that's the look, or if you want to go across, diagonal. If you've never used a multi-shade palette before, no, you don't have to think much. The thinking is done for you on your behalf. If you wanted to do this column or that row, like that's the look right there. That'll be a really smoky look. Or you could just pick a medium shade versus a deeper shade, slap on one of the duochromes and the metallics, and there you have a look. It's also magnetic as indicated by the pinholes on the back. If you wanted to rearrange this palette, you could. If you wanted to mix and match with retro, that would be a lot of fun. And create your own dream palette with Natasha Denona shadows. I could have went without the blush trio. I just don't think the blush shade is that impactful on my skin tone. I do like the glow base texture. I feel like it has a little more slip than other glow cream bases from her previous palettes, but I'm happy with Bloom as well as the bronze palette like I mentioned. So I have a lot of Natasha Denona cheek products that will keep me quite happy even without the Dream Trio blush palette. Hopefully she does release more in this format. I do prefer this format over the four pan one. I just think it's a lot more edited and easier to deal with. You have the magnetic closure, you have the mirror here, and there's no plastic sleeve, but the Dream Glow, like the powder itself, doesn't have a lot of kickback. So don't feel like it's going to uh, disrupt or contaminate your cream shades here. But perhaps Natasha would release another trio with a blush shade that has a little more color to it, maybe warmer on the more terracotta side. And the lipsticks, yes, the design is fun, didn't necessarily have to have these shades. Not the best looking on me, but let me know if you like the mauves. I like the mauves as eyeshadow. Mauves as lipstick, maybe not so much, but I understand how this color matches well with what's happening in the palette, but I will probably just use my Natasha I Need a New Shade that I already own. I believe it's Michelle, Naya, and one other shade, as well as my I Need a New Lip Liners that I think just look better on me than this color. Out of all the items, I love the eyeshadow palette the most. I've enjoyed using it. I will continue to do so for the rest of the month. And again, hopefully the demos help in you not wanting to buy the palette, but you saw the colors in action and you can now dive into whether it be your other Natasha Denona palettes or other palettes that have a similar color story and can recreate the same looks. Let me know down below fam if you're gonna wait for the dream palette, if you're not gonna buy, if you have, you already bought it. I get that too. I'll see you down in those comments fam and until then that is a wrap. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope this video helped and if you liked this video as I mentioned before at the beginning perhaps consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing and maybe hitting the notification bell. And until then I will see you on here again with another Natasha Denona palette extravaganza or maybe a vlog. I should do one again. Take care and I will see you again soon.